today's show, we've been asking the important question, how can I know if my child's education is on track? Well, one buzzword out there that you probably hear a lot is common core education standards. Some parents love the idea, others, mm, not so sure. We brought back Chent Linton, president of the School Improvement Network, to bust a few of the myths. First, what's the difference between core curriculum and common core? Brooke, that's a great question. You know, one of the, the, the mistakes that we hear often is, oh, they're changing the curriculum, there's this new common core thing. Well, the reality is the common core is just a set of standards. They're really the minimum standards, and they're higher than most state standards have ever been. Mm -hmm. So that's an exciting thing. As far as curriculum, that's what's taught. So, and that's up to the states. Every state, even district decides, and often even the school, what are the things we're going to teach? That's the core curriculum. And so, actually, at a, on a state-by-state -state basis, the core curriculum is what a state's decided. This is the core that we're going to teach. Mm -hmm. I'll throw out some myths that maybe get parents riled up. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I, you hear a lot about this. You're going to help us understand. First, that common core standards are driven by a political agenda. You say that's a myth. Yeah, that's, uh, well, we've, we've heard of the common core called the Obama core. Mm -hmm. And President Obama had nothing to do with it. In fact, the common core was designed by teachers, educators, business leaders, and there were politicians that were involved, but at the state level predominantly. So states got together, 48 in fact, and decided what are the things that are most important that students need to be prepared for the jobs of tomorrow. And so that shifted the whole energy behind what is this all about. So it's really been very state driven by governors and business leaders to really move students to the next level and set a higher minimum bar. It's great to set a standard and then as you know, as I know, as parents know, as, as school districts know, there's a cost to every standard that we try to impose on ourselves. Is, is the core standard tied to any sort of funding or budget? No, it's not. In fact, every state had standards before the Common Core came out. And so that funding is just the same. Now, the one piece that would require a little more cost is training our teachers. And as we talked about earlier today, our teachers are so important for our students to really be able to learn and progress. We need to invest in them and help them understand what are the new standards, what do they look like, and how do we teach students to be ready for tomorrow? Myth number two, this railroads teachers. It tells them what to teach and how to teach it. Not true. Not true. Big, big myth. Teachers get to choose what to teach. So the standard is set. Here's the standard of what a student must learn. In fact, that classroom we looked at earlier today uh, on decomposing numbers, mm -hmm. that was she was a common core teacher. Decomposing numbers is part of one of the standards. And so students get to learn that and see it, but there's no direction on what you do, how you do it. And so that's a great example. Here the students are actively engaged, focusing and learning on how to decompose the numbers. So it becomes very helpful. But the teacher actually determines what activities there are, how he or she applies them, and how to have the most impact on the students they're teaching that day. How do these core standards affect our ability and, and yeah, our ability to get data on the kids, to get information on how they're doing and tracking their success? So the, the standards really are just, they just set the standard that we get to look at. And find, you know, what are our kids learning? We mm -hmm. can look up common core standards and find out, here's the things that my students should be learning in their grade level. So grade by grade, we can find that out. But as far as gathering data, that's that's a, a crazy myth. Um, there are there there have been there's two big consortiums that have been working on designing assessments, and I think those have got tied into the standards themselves, but they're completely unrelated. One is a, an approach by states to how do we assess these new standards, mm -hmm. which is really probably a good idea if we understand that, but the myths about gathering all these, you know, tooth impressions and <laughs> eye color and hair color are just crazy. The next myth out there is that this Common Core standard will, will force us to treat every single student the same, kind of a cookie cutter model for each classroom. You say that's not, not supposed to happen. No, in fact, when, when you hear common, I think I think that's the, the big mistake. Oh, it is the common core. Well, the reality is, for the first time, we're really enabling teachers to be able to push students farther mm -hmm. and to be able to attain higher levels of achievement. And the common core is designed to do that. So this is something we've really never approached on a state-by-state -state basis to this extent or degree before. So they're more rigorous. The common part is that these are standards that states have agreed in common to say, these are the minimums we have to have, much like a freeway system. We have a federal freeway system, and to be clear, this is not a federal initiative, but that's a standard. We're going to keep roads at a certain level, we're going to do things at a minimum, mm -hmm. and this is, it's similar to that. So things that are really good 
Well, states get to choose what, what's taught, how it's taught, when it's taught, but at a minimum we're saying, hey, those kindergarten kids need to understand how to decompose numbers, not just count, and so on. Myth number five, this, this standard will lower test scores. How does it affect the testing process that goes on in classrooms? You know, that's a great question because we, anytime we have new standards, we have to create new assessments or new tests right. to see, do the kids get it? Right. So the first year things come out, in fact, the state of New York recently released their new assessments. Well, to people that see last year's and this year's scores say, oh my goodness, there's common cores, this common core doesn't work because the scores are lower. The scores are different. It's literally comparing an apple to a tomato or, you know, it's not even apples and oranges. It's fruits and vegetables. <laughs> it's way off. Yeah, so it's okay. very different. So the assessments now are different. So this year, as states have their first set of common core based assessments, they set a baseline. Okay. And so we need to all just realize, don't worry, yeah. we're going to see, we have higher levels, higher expectations, we have higher standards, so we're probably going to see some adjustments that are going to be helpful for us to recognize, and parents don't freak out. These new standards speaks to the idea that education is changing, curriculum is changing, and any parent who has an older child that's gone through the school system and now has a younger child beginning their education sees that firsthand. How do you see curriculum changing and evolving? How has it changed? Well, I think the, the big, one of the big changes is that we're, we're seeing teachers now start to think and understand we're really preparing students differently for the jobs that we don't even know if they're created. Mm -hmm. This really becomes an economic issue. You know, can our kids get out? I think as viewers are thinking about this, the big question as a parent I have is, are my kids going to get the jobs they need? Are they going to be ready? And um, That's an emotional thing to think about. That's a big picture question that every parent is, is really juggling and worrying about. Yeah, surprise I'm even this emotional about it, but uh, well, it's, it's really important. And as parents, we need to think about what are these things? How do, we, how do we get our kids ready? You know, the jobs of the attorneys and doctors, the jobs that parents are still saying, gosh, I wish you were doing those things. They're not there. Mm -hmm. you know, I talked to a law firm here in Salt Lake City just a few months ago that said, we have 150 applicants. We've only got a couple of jobs. Wow. And I think $100,000 in debt, and people are looking for anything they can get. Well, so Break it down for us then. Let's start basic elementary school. What are some of the, the changing curriculum, the evolving curriculum that now kids are going to leave the elementary school system hopefully knowing and have mastered. So the what the specific changes are is that we, we now, in fact, there's a set of learning progressions. So students, we've always had standards that should scaffold or stack on each other. Mm -hmm. But there are progressions in place now so that uh, parents can actually look them up. The teachers know specifically, hey, in kindergarten, we're going to decompose numbers. We're going to, there are several things that we're going to learn. So the curriculum's going to shift. It actually will appear to be very different. So our students that were learning things in sixth grade two years ago mm -hmm. will be learning some of those things in fourth grade and maybe even third grade getting exposed to those ideas. Even so just the kindergartners Chad, are leaving the kindergarten classroom reading yes. is a huge evolution yes. from what we've seen in the last yes. 10 years. On the secondary school level, junior high school, what's changed? So we're, again, we're seeing a, a lot of the activities that typically occurred at the upper grades are, are now happening in the, at the junior high level. Yeah. We're seeing, you know, the algebra, the geometry classes that were taught at high school are moving down into the middle schools. And so the curriculum is changing and we're, we're realizing that students rise to the level of expectation that we have. Have. And so the things that we as parents saw when we went to school are happening at earlier ages. And then what becomes important is what is happening in that classroom? Yeah. You know, are the, are the kids engaged? Are they learning? Are, are we seeing technology? Are there whiteboards on the walls? And so the kids can have more senses involved and really understand what's being taught so it becomes relevant. And it definitely speaks to parent participation as well. Parents like yourself getting involved. I admire your passion toward this topic. Thanks. We're grateful for helping us understand and learn along with you. Tell us more about your organization and where we can get information about that. So you can find out more about the School Improvement Network at www.schoolimprovement.com. We're very focused on 100% of students being college and career ready when they leave high school, whether they choose to go to college and get a, a higher ed degree or if they want to jump into a career and take on a vocation, we want them ready. And so we create the tools and the resources to help teachers to be supported, to be able to progress, and really know what to do to help kids get there. Chet, thank you so much. You've enlightened us. It's been a really intriguing discussion, so we appreciate your time. Thanks, Brooke. We'll be right back.